This is Good Morning San Diego. The NFL will be adding a new rule that's altering a specific play. Former NFL player Nick Lowry is breaking down how and why they're changing the kickoff. We'll explain after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back, everybody, with NFL concussions on the rise each year. One new rule is changing a play that contributes to these high-speed collisions. We're joined by former NFL player Nick Lowry, former NFL three-time Pro Bowl play seven, seven times all pro, though. Seven times <laughs> all pro. How many game winners did you kick? Well, I in a two-year span, uh, I kicked three game winners against the Chargers. So one of the highlights of my career was being hung in effigy <laughs> in the Chargers stadium in all the right. playoff game, which you guys beat us 10 to nothing in uh, 1992. Wow. Okay, interesting. Let's talk about these rules. The kickoff rule is the one we were just talking about. Yes. Well, it's, these rules are so complicated, but the main part of that rule is A, that the people running down can't start running. So imagine that's about a, a five to ten yard advantage for the return team. Then the return team somehow is not allowed to block eight of those 11 can't block. So it's so complicated mm -hmm. that it's going to make it more difficult for the referees. It's going to probably uh, create bigger returns initially. But frankly, I think when you have all these rules changes every single year, it makes it almost impossible for the referees. For the referees to say, oh, you're within 15 yards, so that's okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you blocked outside 15 yards, so that's a penalty. It's going to be a mess. I got a feeling. And, you it's know, be a mess. Yeah, it's going to be. So we'll see what happens. But your passion and your drive is the the issue of CTE. Of course, we think of Junior Seau who had CTE. We came to find out, and you were a friend of Junior's. What, t talk to us about this issue. Well, first of all, Junior Seau is probably uh, the most ebullient, uh, effervescent uh, player in the history of the game. Mm -hmm. Him and Brett Favre, to me, both of whom, uh, one of whom committed suicide, as you know, tragically here. Brett Favre, who's been talking about it recently, both because of what's called CTE, or chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is the accumulation of small hits and then concussions. And what it, we found at Ken Life Sciences, which was featured on Dateline NBC on Sunday, if I could mention another network, is simply that we have groundbreaking research to show that we can protect the brain. We have essentially, through CBDs, which are non- uh, marijuana, non-hemp, and non-THC still are very effective in what's called neuroplasticity. And this is not from any doctor. This is not only Dr. Doug Brenneman with us at Temple and our research there with Candlelight, but also Dr. Julius Axelrod, Nobel Prize winner. So this is legitimate, incredibly significant science. And on top of that, it's going to help us with helping players like Brett Favre, who had serious pain issues, deal with it because it helps reduce the addictive response that all these opioids mm -hmm. that have, that have uh, caused 60,000 deaths, 60,000 deaths in this year alone. Um, so the research is amazing. The answers are here right now, and it can preserve the best game in America, which we know is NFL football. Absolutely. Uh, talk to us about the helmets. They're, they're phasing out some of the older helmets. Tom Brady's is one of them. He's trying to get grandfathered in so he can keep wearing his helmet because right. apparently he likes it. Mm -hmm. But talk to us about the technology and where the studies are taking you. Well, most importantly, um, helmets are going to help, but they're more like the cherry on the, the top of the, the icing. Um, the old helmets were so plastic that they actually got much more um, uh, in, unable to protect the head itself. So I'm not really an expert on the new helmets. I'm interested in the inner cellular helmet that I talked about uh, with Dr. Bennett Amalu on MSNBC about six months ago, which is changing the neuroplasticity of the neurons themselves. And right here, right here in San Diego in La Jolla at the Salk Institute, Dr. David Schubert has found that CBDs not only help um, the brain with what's called neuroplasticity, but actually can protect and might create neurogenesis, which we never thought was possible, which is the brain can regenerate uh, cells themselves in the brain. And you were talking uh, on an interview I saw on one of the network's programs in, uh, about uh, the biomarker, I believe is the term that you use, that they can now look at a living person, see a certain biomarker, and find out if they are prone to CTE or if there's early signs. Absolutely. So now what we're finding is, I can't mention his name, but I have a, a friend of mine from the NFL, used to play for Green Bay, who actually knows that he has CTE right now, but because of the drugs he's been able to take, he's, he's doing reasonably well. So the biomarker is the way to, through the blood, through the plasma, we can in that person's lifetime, before it's too late, know that they have this issue and treat it. So there are lots of answers right now. There's an explosion of research, particularly on the brain, understanding the brain. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, 
football is the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, and Rolf Anerska and all the great people I knew with the Chargers and Junior Seau, uh, let's honor the best game in America by simply taking that next step, get it into the hands of young football players, uh, young athletes, it's not just football, and ob obviously the NFL. Now these cannabis-based products you're talking about, you're not talking about stuff that's going to get people high. You're talking no. about the non Can life is non-marijuana, non-hemp, and non-THC. Now THC is very good for chronic pain, um, and the law is actually allows it with hemp now in all 50 states if it's less than 0.3% THC and out and made outside the country. But we're talking about now pharmaceutical grade, FDA approved, it's not approved yet, but FDA standard protocol, um, pharmaceutical created can cannabidiol, which is going to help millions if not billions of people. And in the short time we have left, what kind of response are you getting from the NFL when it comes to uh, talking to them about, hey, get rid of the opioids, get players on this stuff? Mm -hmm. Even the retired players, some of them, I would imagine. Since 2010, the NFL has been taking more steps uh, uh, more and more aggressively. And I think you're going to see now, uh, pretty soon, research partnerships with NFL alumni and then hopefully current players in the next couple years because uh, there's no risk. This is non-THC. It's not about the high. It's about protecting the brain and the best game in America. Great stuff. Nick Lowry, thank you so much for thank coming you. in. It was the Chiefs, the Jets, and the Bills, right? No, the Patriots. The Patriots, That's right. who you played but for. But it's the Chiefs, baby against the Chargers <laughs> and let's bring it let's bring a team back here to San Diego yes right? please I missed that all of that standing was we need a new stadium too yes we do <laughs> all right Nick Lowry thanks a lot for your time appreciate it